Hey guys, welcome back to the channel today. I am not working on the WRX, uh, but instead a Subaru Impreza 5-door 2.5. This used to be my old car, uh, now my girlfriend drives it, but we're doing some regular maintenance to it. And one of the things we are going to be doing today is flushing the brake fluid. And so I've got a cool little trick for that, uh, so you can do it one man, and I thought I would share that with you. Uh, first things first, car needs new front brake pads. I'm going to go ahead and replace that off camera, and then we can move forward to uh, doing a brake fluid flush. All right guys, so her front brake pads actually look a lot better than I thought they were, so we're not gonna replace them. And we'll just save the pads for another day. Um, it's bound to happen. We're bound to, gonna need them. Um, and uh, so let's get into the kind of the brake, the bleeding of the brakes. Now I know this is a 08 w, uh, Subaru 2.5, but the idea is the same for the WRX. And uh, I try to bleed my fluid on the WRX at least once a year because of the brake fluid that we run for her car. Uh, the longest I'll let it go is about two years, um, but usually about a year and a half is when I like to bleed them, and I like to do it right after the winter months or the wet months going into the summer months, because um, that's probably when they're going to pick up the most water out of the kind of the air around us or the atmosphere. So going into the summer months, she's going to have fresh fluid. Um, this is the handy dandy tool that I've put together that allows me to break or bleed the brake solo. And um, this little valve right here is the one-way valve. And that is going to let the fluid pass only in one direction and not flow back. Um, this is a Canton uh, oil, uh, oil valve used on the AccuSump systems. Um, they're kind of expensive. I think they're like 30 bucks or something like that. But they're worth it, especially if you're going to be bleeding more than one car by yourself. It's cheaper than bringing it to a shop and having them do your brakes for you. Um, then I've got these little barb fittings that I'm connecting uh, a vinyl hose to. And um, this, is a, this is an MPT thread, national pipe thread, so it is kind of a taper or a wedge fit. So all you have to do is tighten this down until uh, it gets kind of tight and it's not going to leak. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Uh, also got it on a magnet so I can mount it straight to the drum or the disc. Uh, makes it super handy um, in keeping it in place. Okay, the only thing to kind of watch out for uh, with like a bleeder like this is that um, I believe the Canton valve uses one half or half inch NT, uh, MPT threads and then these barb fittings I've got them in assorted sizes. I think this is a 3 8 and then I have a 5 16 um, so I can use the hose for that. It just boils down to the size of your um, kind of uh, bleed nipple on the, on the brake caliper. This one is actually too big for this caliper. So what I've done is uh, the ID on this hose is half an inch and the OD on this little hose, which is what I use to uh, get oil out of the engine, is half, uh, half an inch, oh, I'm sorry, quarter inch, quarter inch. So I've tucked it in between so it's a nice snug fit. And then uh, with a little bit of coaxing, I've edged it over the nipple of the bleed valve on the caliper. So. I'll get a kind of a bottle to dump this into, and then we'll get to the actual bleed process. Uh, but this is a very handy dandy tool, and I will link all the parts needed to make this so that you guys can go ahead and make one for yourselves. Hey guys, so before we do anything, you wanna take the cap off the brake fluid reservoir. Uh, also be careful, there's a min and a max line on the side of the reservoir. Max here, min here. Never let the brake fluid level drop below min uh, because you risk sucking air into uh, the master cylinder and that'll push it out through the hard lines to the calipers. 
And at that point, you're going to have to bleed, you know, fill it back up and keep bleeding until all that air comes out because you don't want any air in your, um, in your brake system. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Usually every couple of pumps, check it, make sure and top it off. Um, for, for me, I've always bled uh, the brakes in, in order of the farthest to the closest to the master cylinder, which is this right here. So I'm going to do rear right, rear left, front right, and then front left. Um, and I'm going to flush the system, so I'm going to use a lot of brake fluid today. Uh, and with the one-way valve, all I really have to do is pump the brake pedal so it's nice and stiff. I'm going to open that rear bleeder valve and then I can just start pumping away. And because it's a one-way valve, as soon as, as soon as the fluid starts to flow, it'll only flow in one direction and it won't let, um, when I release the brake pedal, it won't let the fluid flow back into the caliper. So I will go ahead and run around here and show you how to loosen the valve and, uh, or the bleeder screw and um, we'll, we'll show you this little tool in action. Okay. So I'm going to use a, what they call a flare wrench. Um, it's a little different from your typical uh, wrench that you find in a toolbox. They're designed for working on soft fittings. Um, so they've got an extra, normally you get a wrench like this, like a C-wrench. This one comes around additional, around the, um, around the nut. So you can't, it gets a better hold and you can't strip it. I know this because I've stripped brass fittings before, so before you do any brake work, make sure you have a set of fly wrenches. You don't necessarily need them for the bleeder valves, but I, I, just, I just use them anyway because I don't want to strip them and then have to go get another bleeder valve. Okay, so everything's tight, everything's hooked up. What I'm going to do, get in here and just loosen that, and I'm going to go pump the brakes and you should see some fluid start to flow here. So it looks like we've got fluid uh, coming out of the bleeder valve, uh, going at least into the one-way valve. Now the one-way valve is kind of big, so it might take a pump, a couple extra pumps before it actually fills and then goes out the, the drain hose. But it looks like I've got some fluid in this container, so it looks like it's already done that. You know, this is essentially the same as a um, speed bleeder, but instead of being on the caliper, it's re remote. And I like it because I can see the length of hose um, or I can see into the hose and see the fluid coming out of the leader and then going into the one-way valve. Um, so that's just something I like to do. What I'm going to do now is check the reservoir. I pumped it three times. I'm going to top off the reservoir and then really just cycle, cycle this until we drain it out. Alright, so I've pumped and filled, eh, I don't know, maybe a quarter of the container. Um, so I'm pretty sure it's clean fluid now. I don't see any bubbles, which is good. I'm going to close this off and do the other, uh, the driver's side rear, um, which I don't think you guys need to see, but then I'll show you the passenger side front. Um, and, uh, yeah. Okay, so this is a uh, passenger side front. Uh, when you get closer and closer to the reservoir, generally, um, you know, you don't have to bleed as, or do as many pumps because it's closer. So with each pump, you're clearing more of the hard line. Um, and usually what I like to do is do one cycle um, from the rear right all the way to the front left, 
and then do it one more time. Um, so let me go ahead and pump uh, the brake pedal here real quick. Forgot to open the bleeder valve. Oopsies. Okay, well, you just watched me round off the bleeder valve on the passenger front. Uh, right, so that's sort of the reason why I like to use flare wrenches, because the metal is soft. Um, and then with an open-ended one, uh, you have the chance of rounding it. I think in this situation, the valves are, the bleeder valves are a little old. The car's got 150, 160,000 miles on it, and it's over 10 years old. Um, and I was kind of anticipating something like this to happen. So let me go get my assorted bleeder valve kit. I'll be right back. Okay, so I think I've got everything I need. First thing I gotta do is remove that bleeder valve. And we know it's stripped. So that's a 10 millimeter. Uh, we can try to see if we can get it off with the 10. I don't think we're going to be lucky though. Oh yeah, we got lucky. Okay, on the off chance I wasn't going to get lucky, I'm just going to use an extractor. Uh, I've got deep, deep ones and shallow ones for just this particular problem. Um, I really actually don't use these. I think I've used it once, but they're good to have. Okay, this is my assorted bleeder valve kit. Uh, it's an M10. We know that for sure, I think. Uh, we just gotta find the right thread pitch and then the right length. So that's gonna drain brake fluid out, but what a, nothing we can do about it. All right, M10. Definitely not an M10, or not a 1.5. So maybe like a, a 1.0, where is it? This is a 1.0. Maybe, it's gonna be a little longer. Maybe this one? That looks pretty good. Let's see if this will thread in. Pretty good. So tighten this down just a little bit. Recap my hose. Ooh, and the nipple's a little bit bigger on this one. So there's a chance I could remove my little adapter and slide that over. Sweet. Wash my hands, brake fluid is corrosive. Should have wore gloves, but I thought it'd be quick. Okay, so going back to bleeding literally took, I don't know, two minutes to fix that. Uh, gotta loosen the bleeder valve here. And then go pump. She's a little tight. I 
hang this wrench downward. back and just make sure that bleeder valve is working good and it is so we'll finish up this side move back to the driver's side and then do one more full circle and we're done so with this little tool you can pretty much bleed your brakes in about 15 20 minutes which is great and uh as a bonus, you guys got to watch me deal with a uh, stripped bleeder and replace it. Ooh, whoopsies. Haha. <laughs> so if you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. And as always, thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.